So, you want to get into FPV drones, but you have zero clue where to begin, it's a very good thing you found this video first, because chances are, you were about to actually build the wrong drone. Let me save you about $1,000 and show you the drone you're going to want to build as soon as this video is over. So without further ado, roll the intro and let's get you in the air. everybody my name is Sawyer Hartman and yes we built the wrong FPV drone in my last video the drone we decided to build was a 5 inch DJI FPV racing drone that I thought was exactly what all the people on Instagram were using to capture those super smooth cinematic shots and boy was I wrong sure those cinematic shots can be captured on a 5 inch racing drone but I was actually making it a lot harder on myself than it ever needed to be. But now, let me introduce you to the 3-inch Squirt V2 Cinewhoop drone that has completely changed my freaking life. This drone is built to fly slow and precise. This means those long, intricate one-take shots you see on Instagram where the drone flies through tons of objects and obstacles, there's a good chance that was on a Cinewhoop. So in order to help you figure out which drone is right for you, I'm going to tell you the strengths and weaknesses of both drones and let you just decide for yourself. Very durable, these things. We're going to start with the 5 inch drone that we actually built in the last video. First off, the 5 inch drones have incredibly powerful motors, which means these drones are extremely good at fast cinematic flying. Having all this power in a 5 inch quad also means this drone is extremely acrobatic and nimble. With just one flick of the throttle, this drone can launch itself over 100 feet into the air in a matter of seconds. The 5 inch can also pull off extremely complicated acrobatic maneuvers such as rolls, flips, dives, back everything. It, it can do any maneuver and it has enough power to catch itself before it ever hits the ground. Next, the 5 inch actually has a bigger frame and bigger props as well, which help this drone achieve speeds that the 3 inch could not even dream of. This drone's actually not affected by wind at all. And that fact is extremely important because it means if you want to start your journey into cliff diving, this drone can do that where the 3 inch could not even dream of falling down a mountain. So now that we've hyped up the 5 inch enough, it's important that we talk about its weaknesses. The first and most obvious weakness of the 5 inch quad is it is extremely dangerous to fly indoors or around people because these props will cut you in half. Seriously, these are not a toy. These will cut you, they will draw blood, and they will hurt horribly. And if they hit anything in your house or inside, they will break it 100%. The second weakness for the 5 inch quad is flying indoors or even close proximity to things is hard for an extended period of time because since the motors are so touchy, any miscorrection on a stick can send this thing directly into a wall. Another small weakness is since the props aren't protected when you crash, a lot of times the props will break which means instead of being able to fly the drone back home to you, you might actually have to go find it, which gets extremely frustrating, trust me. And then finally, the biggest weakness of a 5-inch drone, in my own personal opinion, is flying slow and controlled is the hardest thing in the world to do on this drone. And well, that's what I built it for, and that is bad which is what brings us the 3-inch Squirt V2 Cinewhoop. Quite possibly the exact opposite of a 5-inch drone. So now that you know everything that the 5-inch is good and bad at, let's look at the 3-inch. Starting with the strengths, first off, this drone is also extremely powerful. Firstly, even though the 3-inch drone has much smaller motors, because of these prop ducts here, this drone makes plenty of thrust and can fly a full-size GoPro. The 3-inch can also still pull off basic aerial maneuvers like flips, rolls, and dives. However, it does have a hard time recovering from drops or gaining altitude quickly due to the smaller motor size. But the motors being smaller is also an advantage. It actually means the controls are less touchy and it's much easier to make small adjustments when flying, which only strengthens the purpose of this drone. This drone is built to fly slow and precise. And its small form factor is actually a huge perk 
because it can fly through almost anything. And finally, the fact that the prop ducks actually double as prop guards means it's finally safe and enjoyable to fly indoors and around people. If you hit a wall or a person, you're not going to cut them in half. And it also means if you crash a drone, a lot of times the props won't break and you can just flip the drone over, rearm, and fly back to you. Now obviously no drone is perfect, so let's talk about the weaknesses of the 3 inch Cinewhoop. First off, because of these fat prop ducts right here, this drone is not aerodynamic at all, and if it is a windy day, your drone will be blown everywhere. Wind affects this drone greatly. Secondly, it's not very acrobatic. So if you're interested in camera moves like this, or even like this, and all of these flips and dives, and it can't really do them as well as a five inch. Now, since the motors are smaller, it means they have to work harder to get the drone in the air, which means the battery is actually consumed faster. So you are going to get shorter flight times on this drone versus the other guy. And then the last obvious weakness of this drone that I can tell is while it has the ability to fly fast, when you fly fast, the camera will actually be pointing at the ground. Since it's meant to fly slow, the, the camera angle just, it doesn't work. You're going to be filming the grass and not actually where you're going. So there you go. The five inch racing drone is pretty much an outdoor fast flying powerhouse, whereas the three inch cine whoop is a very slow controlled cinematic tool. Pretty much the exact opposites of each other. So the last part of this video is quickly gonna be going over what parts go into each of these drones so that you can build them yourself if you want. So I've actually chosen to run DJI's HD video in both of these drones just because I really personally enjoy it and I like HD video in my goggles and I wanna see where I'm flying. So. For both of these drones, you're going to need a DJI Air Unit, the DJI Goggles, and a DJI Remote Controller. Those are the common parts that are going to be in both of these drones. But once you have those, if you're looking to build the 5 inch FPV racing drone, these are the additional parts that I used when building mine. I used the X Hover Skyline 5 inch carbon fiber frame. For my motors, I went with the Hype Train Cricket 2550 kV motors in solid gold because they're beautiful. I'm running a Kukute F7 ESC and FC flight controller stack. Got a set of the Lemon Lime Mr. Steel props on here. And then I've chosen to run 1550 Ma 1550 MAH. These are what they look like. Those are the batteries I'm running on this drone. And that literally is every single thing in this drone right here. Now, if the five inch racing drone wasn't for you and you're looking to build the three inch Cine Whoop beauty of a cinematic drone, these are the additional parts I use to build this guy. I'm using the Shen Drone Squirt V2 HD carbon fiber frame. That is a mouthful. For my motors, I'm using these really small T-Motor 1507s. They're great. They give me enough power, they're quiet, and it gets the job done. For my ESC and flight controller in this, I'm actually using the Hobby Wing G3 F460A stack. And then actually, even though I was told it probably wouldn't fly with my 1550 Ma batteries, I use the same batteries on this that I use on the five inch and it flies fine. And other than that, I'm actually using a GoPro Hero 6 without stabilization and I'm stabilizing all of my footage using real steady go. If you want $5 off or a coupon code, there's one down in the link in the description. Highly recommend it. It is the best way to get smooth cinematic drone footage every single time. But those are the parts that go into building these two incredible pieces of camera equipment. They might look like toys. They might honestly feel like toys when you're using them. But these are two of the most technologically advanced pieces of camera gear that I have not only owned but have ever seen anywhere and that is why I myself am completely obsessed with the hobby of FPV. Now if you're not interested in building these but you do still want to own and fly them, my buddy Drew at Rotor Riot actually builds and tunes them and can ship them to you. I'll put his website right here, it's just Rotor Riot. Whether you want to buy the parts for these drones or buy them already built, that is where I'd recommend getting them from. They are the nicest people ever 
Drew, you are an absolute legend. He built and sent me this one and it flies like a dream. But other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I make new film and photography related videos every single week especially now that the app is out. And if you haven't already checked out our new app, Film Frames, it's an Instagram story and post creator that is free to download in the iOS store. Link is down below as well. But with all that being said, it's time I charge my batteries and go out into the world and start flying the drones myself. Hope you guys are having an incredible day and I will see you next week with a brand new video. Before you go, remember, stay motivated, stay inspired, and never stop creating. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.